right, you ready to talk weather on this Thursday evening? Welcome back, everyone, to Weather for Weather Geeks. It's the Mahoning and Shenango Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video, and we've got cold and we've got snow to talk about here in the short term. And actually, the longer range is looking pretty darn cold as well. This morning's number, 8 degrees, the low temperature at the Youngstown Warren Airport. It was one of those mornings where... Uh, there was definitely a variation across the area, depending on how long the sky stayed clear over your location. In Vienna, in Trumbull County at the airport, uh, we had a clear enough sky for long enough that we got down into the single digits. And this was actually the coldest temperature officially at the Youngstown Warren Airport in about a year, almost a year. 358 days since we've been at 8 degrees or colder. We had a low of 3 above on January 17th of 2024. That's the last time we saw numbers this skinny officially in our area but it was nice to see that sunshine today and this is a time-lapse video showing the crystal clear but cold january sunset over the canfield fairgrounds at about uh, 10 after five or so this evening about a quarter after five by the way the sun rises the latest of the winter season the last one is tomorrow after that the sunrises start getting a little bit earlier uh you know, we, we've had we had our latest or our earliest uh, sunset, I should say, in early December. But the sun rises don't reach their latest point in the winter season anyway until early January. But starting on Saturday, we'll start gaining a little bit of daylight in the morning hours. All right, we've been talking a lot lately about lake effect and lake enhanced snowfall. That, of course, is because the lakes, the Great Lakes, are still not frozen or anywhere close to it. The total ice coverage on the Great Lakes, only 7%. Now on Lake Erie, we have some ice on the western end of the basin, but still, Lake Erie as a whole, only about 12% ice coverage. An average for today's date is closer to 25. It's about 23% is our average ice cover here on the 8th or 9th of uh, January. I'm expecting ice coverage to increase not only on Lake Erie, but the rest of the Great Lakes region with the kind of forecast we have over the next couple of weeks. I don't know if Lake Erie is going to become completely ice covered this winter. It might before January is through and then I expect a February thaw. Uh, so that should uh, put an end to any, you know, really high ice coverage on Lake Erie this year. We had, you know, some lingering flurries, some pesky flurries today. The, the, the lake effect flurry and cloud machine really did not want to shut off today. So we had flurries for a time this afternoon in Sharon and New Wilmington and Mercer and even down towards Newcastle and in parts of uh, southeastern Trumbull County. <clears throat> Trumbull County, I should say, had some uh, lingering pesky flurries this afternoon as well while we were basking in that uh, January sunshine in Lisbon and Selineville and Hanoverton and up towards Canfield as well. All right, our major winter storm is really wreaking havoc on the southern part of the U.S. It's heavy snow along the Red River in northern Texas, southern Oklahoma, Dallas, going back and forth between cold rain, freezing rain, sleet, wet snowflakes. It's a mess on the roads, as you would expect across the Dallas-Fort Worth metroplex. They don't have the infrastructure down here to deal with a lot of snow and ice, and they're really getting hammered this evening in a lot of places and uh, of course this storm is coming east so winter storm warnings extend all the way east into Memphis all of Tennessee the entire state of Tennessee is under a winter storm warning Birmingham Alabama Atlanta Georgia Charlotte North Carolina Raleigh North Carolina all under winter storm warnings as this system comes east winter weather advisories extend as far north as parts of Ohio and Pennsylvania and you know it gets up into central Ohio these winter weather advisories so Columbus Cincinnati Athens Parkersburg Charleston all those locations are under winter storm or winter weather advisories. In the short term, our uh, our uh, main weather concern, of course, the main story is the temperature. We had eight this morning. I think we'll see single digits here and there again tomorrow morning. It'll depend again some on the sky cover. I'm expecting part of the night tonight to be clear, part of the night to go partly cloudy, and especially if it stays clear over your location and if you're in one of the traditional cold spots, a sheltered valley you might see three, four, five degrees before the night is through. But on average, we're looking for something between, say, 6 and 10 as we head out the door on Friday morning. The bulk of the daylight hours will be just fine aside from the cold on Friday. It's Friday evening, of course, that the snow is pushing in. Not a lot of changes with our thinking here. Snowfall expectations have come down a little bit. Our computer model spread yesterday was more kind of up in here between 2 and 3. They're kind of more clustering around 2 right now. We have to keep in mind the high ratios with this uh, snow coming in tomorrow night. It's going to be that fluffy stuff, 15 to 1, you know, snow to liquid ratios. And so it'll be efficient in terms of its ability to accumulate. 
And I think a lot of us are going to get two, two and a half inches. I'm starting to think that anything more than three will be a bonus. And four is the absolute top end of the, uh, you know, the, the potential with this system. I think a lot of us are going to wake up tomorrow morning with a fresh two, two and a half inches worth of snow on the uh, ground. Uh, coating to an inch is pretty much a lock. Once you get up above two, you know, again, I think a lot of us are going to fall in that two to two and a half, two and three quarters range. Once you get up into the three to four inch range, amount or uh, odds start decreasing pretty rapidly. Your chance of getting more than four, I would only put it at about 10 or 15%. At this point, no matter which way you slice it, it doesn't really matter. You know the difference between uh, inch and three quarters, and two inches and a half, two and a half inches, and three inches. Is, it isn't real big in terms of the impacts. It's going to be impactful on the roads tomorrow evening and into the overnight. Anyone who has to be out and about on area roads starting six, seven o'clock Friday evening, taking us through most of the night, uh, you're going to have to keep it slow and uh, be prepared for some tricky travel conditions. The snow will then taper off to flurries first thing Saturday morning. The rest of Saturday just some passing flurries and we expect a quiet day coming up on Sunday. This next system approaches as we head into the new work week and uh, the flurry machine will start back up and we've got another cold air mass coming our way. Real quickly though the expectations as far as snow off to our south. Anyone who has friends or relatives in a place like Nashville they're gonna get quite a bit of snow especially by their standards. Over towards Charlotte you know, especially north and west of Charlotte, a couple or a few inches into Charlotte proper. It's probably more ice and sleet than snow. And certainly once you're south of Charlotte, it's more of a freezing rain concern uh, down into the upstate of South Carolina and into uh, parts of North Carolina as well. You know, a lot of a lot of snowbirds in Ohio and Pennsylvania have either moved down there or they know someone who has moved down into the Carolinas. Uh, and uh, so, you know, you, chances are you know someone that lives down there and they're going to be Having some challenging weather certainly over the next 24 hours or so because much like you know over towards Dallas and, and Little Rock, they just don't have the kind of infrastructure to deal with this kind of thing like we do in eastern Ohio and western PA. 10-day temperature trend. A couple of cold waves. We're in the middle of one right now. Another one is coming our way during the middle of next week. Then uh, some moderation towards next weekend. That might come with a winter storm threat next weekend right around maybe the 18th, 19th, or maybe to, towards the 20th. It's MLK Day, the 20th. Um, and then I think there'll be another shot of Arctic cold beyond that. So we're going to be ebbing and flowing in terms of the intensity of the cold here, but there'll be a pretty stout shot of Arctic air middle of next week, 15, 16 degrees below average. I think beyond this 10-day period, 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, that looks pretty cold to me. Then as we go towards the very end of the month and into February, I remain fairly optimistic that at the very least the, the pattern is going to relax and maybe even when we get into a pretty mild pattern for a time in the month of February. I speculated that some on that last evening on Weather for Weather Geeks, and I, don't, I haven't seen anything today to change my mind on that idea that February as a whole should have a distinctly different flavor than January, which is going to shape up to be quite the cold month across our part of the uh, country. Have a great rest of your Thursday night, everyone. Thanks for watching. Let's meet here again, same time, same place, on Friday evening.